Hello, this is a short video that I've made to try and outline some of the um, learning that I've developed over the last few weeks in the area of technology and research and in particular in managing my research projects. Uh, what I wanted uh, for, for many years now, I've been, I've been using Mendeley to store my PDFs and I've been making notes next to anything that I read and also I do most of my writing and my management note taking in Google Docs. So I've got, say on one big project, I've got a, a large Google Doc which has got lots of different sections. I've got some tables and I post the citations in there to try and give them some organizational feel. And then I can create hyperlinks from different areas or to different documents. So it's really it's just different documents in Google that are linked together. But what I felt I was missing was somewhere where I can write uh, like notes cards on, on particular things that I read because I'm just embarking on a, a a significant literature review as part of my PhD so although I've been researching for quite a while and teaching academic skills I've just got to that stage of doing my my lit review which is a big project which is going to last many years in total and I wanted somewhere where I can build a conceptual framework a, um, a mind map and create some hyperlinks I've also had for many years a, a website but that's very external facing um, and it's built on pages I wanted something which is more dynamic and can be linked to my writing than the public facing website. Uh, now I could have done a private website but uh, I've basically I've discovered this thing called Notion and um, I'd like to share some of that with some um, people who are fellows at similar stages to me or even people who are way beyond a PhD but don't have anywhere like this which can um, allow individuals or groups to, to share concepts and to build uh, a resource that can be um, time saving in the long run even though it might take a little bit of time to get used to so if I head over to the screen and then I'll take you through some of the things that I've just worked out in as short a time as possible so this is not a video on how to do it this is really just a video sharing some of my practice so that I can share that with with colleagues as well so Notion is a, a free open access um, resource uh, which allows a space to be built and it can be built for all sorts of reasons, all sorts of projects. It could be that research is just one part of your notion and that you keep personal and professional um, content on there as well. But part of the reason for me to separate this out from those other things is to separate it out and have some clarity so when I'm in this space, I'm more focused on research, hopefully speaking. So what you see here is on the left hand side, you see um, some of the, um, the content and like any website or um, directory system, there's there's different layers, um, and the most of mine are in this research workflow space. Um, make sure I'm on the wrong thing here. So um, at the top, I've got some quick notes, which I'll come back to. The next um, task that I have here, I just move my move my face here a little bit. The next um, task that I have is, um, or the section is this uh, workflows and notes. So what we've got here is we've got. Um, uh, a Kanban board which has three columns and this is this week's things I want to do next month things that I want to keep on the agenda but for the next three months um, and you can see they've got tags within them each one of these is expandable um, and so if I open that up it's a card and I can put whatever notes I want to on that card um, what I like is that in terms of the things that we see and we view if I look at properties I can this done by when and it's not essential to flick this on but what it shows is now you can see these purple strips on the left hand column so if I take this entry card this data card and if I move it into review next month because I've changed the priority of it you see that it automatically changes that review next month If I change it back into this week it's changed it to this week I can view this in different views and um, so if I get rid of those so you don't need to see them in this case and um, but that's how it works so that's one thing that I find pretty useful. Next thing down is I've got a weekly log. Now the weekly log, what I wanted was I wanted somewhere to um, to um, track the work that I've done because I think it's quite easy when I'm, I'm trying to um, build my research in and around my day job. And so um, it's easy to think that I haven't done anything for several days, whereas actually I have done things in terms of reading for the odd hour here and there. So what I wanted to do was somewhere to log that work. So what I'll do is a calendar view here, so I'll just click this entry card, I'll title it, I will put in how much work is done, and then I've got a thing which talks about how much uh, the type of work that I've done, which seems a bit excessive, but once we look at the different view, and this alternative view here is the table view, you can see there that 
um, it sums the work that I've done. I can change a filter and I think I've got a filter on which says everything I've done in the last month maybe we can have it weekly uh, or you can get rid of the filters. Um, you can see that I've tagged the type of work that it is here so if I wanted to um, focus in on how long I've spent on a certain task over recent weeks then I can click that and just limit the view to those um, items which are tagged in a certain way. Um, each of these I tend not to have much content in them but it might connect to the actual piece of work that I've been working on because I can link within Notion and that hopefully will make a bit of sense in a minute. But I find that really useful um, already. I've only been using it for 10 days or so. If I go back to my main page and work my way down, so we got to this weekly log. I've then got a Gantt chart, chart included and um, let's say this, this template is, is not mine to start with. I've just adapted it. I found it online. A uh, guy of name check him in a minute but I found all this on a template just um, which got me started. The next thing is a, a Gantt chart so this ena enables me to visualize some of the projects that I need to work on and looking at it now I probably could I could overlap it I could change this into a Gantt chart but I think this works for me in terms of this is the, the broader spectrum of work that I sh think I should be doing and then that first section is kind of my, my to-do tasks which are related. Then we get down to my um, the main body of my work. So uh, I did some work on a proposal and that's included in this page. I've got work ongoing on ethics applications. I've got a lit review which is the main heart of what I'm doing. I've got a section on methods and section on references and a glossary. We'll come back to those in a minute. I've got a space. What you can do within Notion is link outside Notion. So whereas I've got previous documents in Google, I can just create a hyperlink there and then within this, this one um, portal I can then link to other documents without having to go and search for them which doesn't take a long time but two or three clicks here and there can be quite distracting and um, I've got some external links there as well and then I have included some other research projects I'm involved in just as a link but I wanted to keep the focus on this main one project I've also got a space where we can um, include some uh, personal development productivity type tips things that I want to um, remind myself of now and then. So if we if we go into this current PhD notes, if we look at, um, what should we look at? Look at the method section. So the method section, for example, this is a page and then you can do what, you can build a page however you want. So um, these are titles. If what you see on a page is um, straight at the top, starting with a blank page, click the plus, and this gives us the choices of things that we can add to a page to build the content in a way which works for us as individuals using the software. So the most obvious one is to add a text block and then we can just add text and that's easy. Um, alternatives, alternative types of content, we can add a sub page, to-do list, headings is what you see above and I've colored those headings as well uh, just to try and make them a bit more graphically uh, useful. Bulleted lists are found really useful, numbered lists, toggled lists. If you have a list of items which you don't want to show on a page all the time then you can add that and then you click the toggle and it will give you the drop down should you want to look at those. Quotes are found really useful as well on some different pages and you'll see those. There's dividers and there's callouts. Callouts are really good they, and they, they're similar to like in a textbook. Not that useful there for that one but you can see that we can add, draw attention to different content. Um, what else can we add? So that's the main content. Um, we can add these tables, Kanban boards, things that, that you, you'll see on this page. Images as well, uh, audio, upload files, embed, links to Google Drive, PDFs, table of contents you might see in a second as well. There's all sorts and it's really just about how you manage the graphical representation of your work. Another feature I really like in this is this backlinks. This is what I, I haven't seen in a website, although I'm sure it's available. But um, backlinks is fantastic, and it means if I mention this page on any other pages, then this destination page will highlight how many backlinks I have. So if I click that now, you can see that in the page I built on group cohesion, there is a mention of the method section. So I can click that, and it takes me straight to that part of the um, page where I mentioned the previous page, methods. So you can see here, this would be one of my pages on a, on a subtopic within my lit review. This is the quote feature, as you can see it's drawn attention to it. 
Um, this is a diagram that I added and you can see I added it to one of these blocks but these blocks can be moved around really easily so I could have my diagram down there um, or I could have it back where it was. Oh, I've just messed that up. I'll have to re reconfigure that. But um, you can see you can create different columns by just moving these blocks around. So I could take this column here, which is a reference, and I could move that along to the side. And then we could have two references next to each other, which looks a bit naff. But as you can see, in terms of um, moving around the content and managing the workspace is pretty good. So I'm flicking around, I do apologize. The, um, so the, I've got key concepts, I've got classic references, I've got key contemporary references, notable primary studies. And you see, so there's a study here which is um, about group uh, climate, um, social climate, but I found that in a particular chapter in a book and I wanted to draw attention to that. I've drawn out the key points there and this is where some of my, my key studies. I, this is a... Um, in uh, the where did I put this on oh, references? So if I look in references, I've started to build a list of references, which is not my complete reference list, which but it is a, a series of sources which I have um, really needed to drill down into. So this is where the kind of file directory cards approach. Um, so I've tagged it as a type of book. I've tagged it as a book, as an edited book. I've got the full reference in there as well gives me some dates when I created it when I last and and whether it's partially reviewed or it needs more attention so I could identify a source that needs to be read put it into my um, reading list and then tag it as needing work once I'm within the book or the the journal article then you can see here I've chosen to uh, review chapters separately but you see I can build links to these different theories um, to different other reading sources, models and approaches. So basically different pages on here. Um, and you can see again, this is a good example, the most linked page, but this goes to 11 backlinks and it will show me all the places that I've mentioned it. So this again is in a table format. So it's exactly the same type of database approach that Notion uses. Um, and I've chosen to have the, the, the main author's name the title there so I can see it so that's not a full reference the full reference is actually hidden inside and we can play around with some of these columns you can move them up and down you can choose to show some choose to not show some you can have notes next to them I've got the year here I can arrange these then by year um, I could arrange them by the date created all sorts of things but I find that really useful another page that I've chosen to include um, alongside these is a glossary so I've started to build this glossary and again, this has been built in a table. I can have links to other pages on Notion, or as I've done here, I've just included some terms which I know that in time will need to have an entry. And again, it's up to me as to what terms I put into this glossary. So what it's all about is trying to build these connections, which I hope will help me to form better connections in my brain as well. But it means that if when I, when I come back to any of these, I've instantly got links the things that I've done before. So if I go back to my research workflow page, you can see here where all of these on this main um, landing platform start to um, be connected. And you can see most of those I've just looked through there are in that, that main page. Finally, uh, the first thing that I've got at the top is this quick notes. So um, it works really well on my phone as well. And what, I, what I've got is this quick notes at the top so the opening the page that opens up on my phone when I open Notion is Quick Notes and it's really easy to just add a note and that note can then be um, quickly tapped out. But when I come to my computer and I look on Notion, the first things I see are the notes that I've recently thought about um, adding to Notion, things that come to mind. What I can do then is I can drag that into my um, things to do if I want to directly or I can just take it as a note and cut it out and add it somewhere else. I found that quite useful as well. So overall, um, I set this up not really knowing what I, I would be using, but for the last two weeks I've been using it quite a lot, populating it as I read articles and chapters, books, um, and I, I think it, it it's starting already to feel like um, it's worth the initial effort that I had to put in to, um, to use it. 
I've got a page here on using Notion. I'd encourage you to uh, just do some YouTube in. You'll see lots of people um, explaining how they use it best. This one in particular by Sterling Osborne was the guy, uh, the one that I watched and the, the template that I used to set this one up. But there's loads of good stuff online. Um, so that is my, uh, my brief outline of how I've uh, started to use Notion and how I think I might embed it in my, my research workflow. So thanks for watching.